I'm not supposed to be telling you this, but I fly for the CIA. I'm a reconnaissance pilot. Uh -huh. And I just came from Tokyo. I just landed about uh, about 10 minutes ago at the flight level 510. And about halfway between, <clears throat> I'd say about halfway in a straight line between Tokyo and Hawaii. Uh -huh. I was about halfway, I'm not sure. I was out of radar contact, just on my own alone there. But I was still in radio contact, and this, this is, uh, I don't, is it a full moon? I don't know if it's a full moon or not, but it's very bright out there in the ocean. And this thing came up to me, no wings, about double the length of my airplane. I was flying a Phantom F-411, uh -huh. but double the length, which would be about 45 feet, round-shaped, uh, not circular, but more triangular, but uh, no, no bottom and no top, all they were equidistant sides of the triangle. And they weren't sharp. Uh, they were sort of rounded off edges. And the ends of it were flat. And no noise, no wings, no thrust, no windows, no, uh, you know, nothing which uh, would give it a reason to fly. No appendages of any kind? No, nothing. Okay. And on the size of a phantom, I don't know if you're familiar with on the bait, we do have uh, very high intensity spotlights, which are built into the fuselage. You can see the side of an aircraft. They're used to, when you're loading up bombs at night at the runway, you turn them on so the guys can see something with the bombs underneath them. Yes. And so I turned the lights on the side and saw a very clear picture of it. I mean, it, it was there. It was my imagination. Did the light have to actually reflect off this thing or illuminate it? No, it didn't reflect it. It was a porous material, probably. Well, it looked like sponge rubber is what it looked like. I, I, but it was not metallic. Uh -huh. You could see pores in it. You couldn't see pores, but it looked like uh, maybe asphalt would look from a distance, something like that. But, I mean, is it that light actually illuminated? No. It okay. just sort of went ahead and hit it. Okay. It didn't bounce off or anything. How close did this thing get? The closest it got was about 70 feet from the wings. Now, I have radar, and it was on radar, and uh, the image doesn't, you know, wouldn't reflect that close, but I, it got up to about 50 feet <clears throat> from the left wing, and then uh, as far as about 200 feet, and it stayed there for about a half an hour. Mm -hmm. This is at Mach 2.2, uh, which is roughly you know, 1,900 miles an hour. Did you see this as it was coming in towards you? <clears throat> I didn't see him come up on me, no. I just sort of looked over and it was there. And then I looked and looked and looked, and I thought, well, I just, you know, a shadow or something. So I oh, turned on all the lights on that side, and it was definitely there. I could see the dimension. I could see the top and the bottom and the end of it. The dimensions of the height, I'd say, were, um, oh, I'd say probably 10 feet. 10 feet by 10 feet. Okay. Was this thing laying flat, or was it to have the apex up? It had the apex. It always had the apex up, but the, it would slowly rotate. And the apex, I think, in the, all the time was there. It started from the apex being up to the apex completely rotating around. It took about 15 minutes to do it. I see. And it would move a little bit and stop, move a little bit and stop, move a little bit and stop. It didn't look like that was necessary for flight. It looked like that. I think they just. I think it was just turning for. I don't know why, but it wasn't necessary for flight, you could tell that. And did it maintain the same position uh, in relation to you while it was doing this? Mm, more or less, yeah, I'd okay. say. But it, it didn't stay close to me very long. It only stayed 50 feet for about a couple of minutes. It stayed just out of real good sight most of the time. It seemed, I mean, it might sound crazy, but they seemed to know what was good sight and what wasn't for me. I have perfect vision 20-20. And I'm a, I'm a, uh, a captain in naval intelligence, but I've been working for the CIA for the last two years. Okay. Did you get any buffeting off of this? No, none. No, uh, no buffeting, no turbulence, nothing. Okay, how about uh, instrument interference? No, perfect. Okay. Were you in contact with any ground stations for radar check? Uh, there's no radar in that area. I, I, tried three times to see if I was in communications with somebody and asked if there was aircraft in my area that was, you know, maybe a little off course. And they said, no, the closest aircraft was 400 miles away, they said. 
And I said, yeah, I'll play pause. And they said, yeah. And there was two radar ships, but they were both out of range. And oddly enough, he disappeared right when, we, when I, he, this guy said, well, you'll be in range in about three minutes. And about a minute after that, this guy pulled away. Okay. Did you get the impression you were being observed? Uh, I think the air. I think they're more interested in the airplane. They weren't me. Okay. But I did have that impression. Yeah. I also had the impression that they knew what was going on. I mean, I know it sounds it sounds a little nutty, but no one else seems to care about it. I've been flying all my life. I know what an airplane is and what it isn't. There's not that many airplanes that can go as fast as that at that altitude. First of all, you know, two point two is pretty right. fast. You bet. Did you have any unusual physical or mental sensations while all this was going on? No. Okay. The only thing that sort of bothers me is I haven't slept for about 30 hours, but that's not any big deal for me. I've done a lot before. I've just, I just was coming from uh, from two other missions, and I just hadn't got a chance to sleep, and I just wanted to get home. So I, I've been fine a long time, but I, like I say, I've done that a lot, so it's nothing. I mean, I, I've been able to do that before, so. Okay. And you would definitely say that the surface of that, or the texture of the surface was pitted? Yeah, not big coals, but uh -huh. it was rough. Rough, okay. It wasn't metallic. What was your altitude? Uh, flight level 510. I did climb a little bit to see what sort of... I was curious. I climbed it to 60,000 feet almost instantly at that... I don't know if you're familiar with that plane. Are you a pilot? No, sir. Well, that plane can climb very fast. It's one of the best planes we have. In fact, its actual top speed is classified. But, anyways, I gave it full power and uh, put the nose up to 60,000 feet. And there's only maybe eight or ten other aircraft in the whole world that can keep up with that. And this thing kept up with no strain at all, you know. I mean, no effort at all. It kept right next to me. Mm -hmm. okay. And he started to move almost instantly when I did, like he knew I was going to do that. Moved right, along. Left, What's that? Moved right along with you. Yeah, no problem okay. at all. Now, when he left me, I uh, I went up to 60,000 feet and sort of stayed there for a while and put it into a dive to see if I could outrun him. And from 60,000 feet to about 49, I got it up to about 3 point something Mach, which is really moving. He stayed right up with me with no problem at all. And then the guy said, well, you'll be within radar range in about 3 or 4 minutes. And about a minute after that, he pulled away from me, going forward, at at least triple the speed with no effort at all. I mean, I mean, no acceleration. He just was there, then he was a speck, and then he was gone. Okay. At the same altitude. Do you remember the time on that? Well, this is about, uh, I'd say 12 hours ago. No, about 10 hours ago. Okay. And how long did that whole event take place? I'd say all together about half an hour, 20 minutes, half an hour. Okay. I did get the time, but the time was uh, Korean time. I can't remember whether I... It, it would be an hour off if I even gave you the time. I, it was just... I can't remember if it was 4 a.m. or 4 p.m. It was one or the other Korean time. Okay. I can't remember if I reset the clock or not when I left Korea. Okay, is there any chance of getting your name? Yeah. Um, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, Anything in case we want to get back to you? You can get to my commanding officer, and he can get to me, but I'm not really tell, supposed to tell you. I'm not supposed to tell you that I was doing this. Uh -huh. But uh, my commanding officer's name is, and he's uh, Chief of Naval Intelligence at the Pentagon. Now, I'm always in contact with him. He's my superior, and... Uh, That would be just sent to the interior of the Navy Department. No, care of Office of Naval Intelligence, uh, Admiral Collins, uh, Pentagon, Washington, D.C. Okay. But the main thing I want to tell you is he, this thing had no, you know, like you can sort of tell if an aircraft is, is really working to keep up with you speed-wise. I mean, it sort of has characteristics, but this, 
had no effort at all keeping up with me, and there's no lag. I mean, they can accelerate or decelerate as fast as they want to, go up and down as fast as they want to. It was not a, it defied all the laws of aerodynamics. There's no reason for it to fly. Okay, when this thing pulled away from you, was it uh, high speed? Yeah, it was next to me. Um, within 10 seconds, it was a speck, and uh, a speck on the radar. The radar screen I had is about uh, 150 mile range. I can tell you the speed exactly. It took it uh, less than 10 seconds to get off the ra radar range. Less than 10 seconds to go 150 miles. And I saw it going across the radar range. And then okay. I, then we have a, on the radar you can, uh, there's three modes, there's 150 miles, there's 250 miles, and 500 miles. And so to see it on the 500 mile range, I upped the range from 150 to 500. And the time it took me to flip the switch, which is another three seconds, it had already gone past the 500 mile range because it wasn't on the radar anymore. Which means it had already gone through that other ring. You can imagine a circle, 500 mile circle around you. That's what it's like. Mm. And we have intelligence radar, which is the best you can get. I mean, it, you, can, you can pick up a uh, skydiver 400 miles away, and in, in, you know, free-falling skydiver will pick up on our radar. Did this thing leave any trails it took off? No, we have uh, Hawker heat-sensing missiles, and the heat-sensing missile has a computer which can track the uh, exhaust of a jet. Uh, the exhaust of a jet stays in the sky the same way a wave in water stays in the water. You can track it the same way. Well, that computer was on two, and there was no thrust, no heat, no energy coming from this. Okay. So this thing will sense heat up to 20 miles away at that altitude, and there was no heat coming out of this. And that's very sensitive also. And you can start up a gasoline engine, you know, in a car 20 miles away from this thing, and turn on the missile and it'll find the heat and then blow it up. That's how accurate it is. Okay, did you get a good, uh, a solid return on your radar? Perfect, yeah. Okay. What surprised me? Yeah, it was perfect. Okay, I can tell you that the, uh, just from the research and, uh, uh, data bank information that we keep, that the triangular shape object is uh, becoming quite common. Uh, Someone else has seen it, you mean? Pardon? Someone else has seen it? The, the OAS, oh yes, the triangular-shaped object, has been seen many times. Oh. I'm a little surprised that you didn't see some kind of colored light system on it because... Uh, no lights. No lights, okay. But uh, they're getting to be quite a common object reported by witnesses. Do you have an idea where they come from? Oh, no. The, those associated in the field of ufology are kicking around all kinds of theories. Uh, some think they're from outer space, and some think they're some sort of a uh, time traveler, something coming from another dimension or a parallel universe. Or I'm not the only one that's seen these things. No. I mean, other people have seen these things. Well, that's good to know. Oh, yes. Yeah. They've been seen at close range by ground witnesses. Yeah, well, do you have a, a magazine or anything you print? We put out a, a, a publication periodically would, to keep people up on the latest events. Uh, uh, could, could I receive that? Oh, sure. Could you send it to my brother? Would that be okay? Sure. Um, okay, why don't you send it to... Uh, Sure, will do. Yeah, I don't know if it helped you to tell you this, but uh, the people at the approach control in the Navy, didn't, they didn't seem to care. So, Was this in uh, Honolulu? Well, Honolulu approach control, and Honolulu, the Honolulu Navy there didn't seem to care. Uh -huh. And the same thing in San Francisco. Okay, did you get our numbers from the people in uh, San Francisco? Or Honolulu. Honolulu, okay. So, I... Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, well, I think that uh, the people w that are associated with the flight controls, FAA and so forth, they, they've been hung up 
you know, given so much responsibility in this field and has given, given them such a headache over the years, they just, they're trying to get it off of their back. Mm -hmm. It seems like every time the FAA gets uh, in the press associated with UFO sightings and these people at the various FAA facilities are hounded by the public and answering, uh, they're doing more time answering the phone uh, in relation to UFOs than they're doing, taking care of their job. Yeah, I, I wanted to speed up and get around him and see what the other side of this thing looked like. But uh, I could not run him. He could slow down and speed up as fast as I could. A Phantom can go from 2.2 Mach to uh, 50 miles an hour in about uh, 10 seconds. That's how fast he can slow down if you wanted to. Uh -huh. And I tried that, and he slowed down just as fast. There's very few airplanes that can keep up with a Phantom. There's no Russian airplanes that can. So I, it either it's one of ours or it's somewhere else. But like I said, there's no reason for it to fly. It has no energy coming out of it, no heat, no power source, nothing. Yeah, a lot of scientists that are working on this feel that uh, these things are associated with uh, some kind of a technology which has a, a laws of physics completely different from our own. Hmm. Well, has anyone ever reported you know, seeing one up close and touching it? Oh, yes. It's not a common thing. Uh, close approaches are common, but uh, having the opportunity to touch one is not, but it has happened. And what does it feel like? Well, uh, all of those that uh, we have on record uh, claim that uh, it appeared to them to be a very solid or a metallic object of some kind. Someday, one of them has to land and talk to somebody, right? Well, there's claims of that, too. But unfortunately, there's just no physical evidence to back it up. Hmm. And uh, that's what uh, the scientific community wants right now. There's a mountain of statistical evidence in relation to this subject, plus a lot of good photographs, and there's some really some good films around, and... Uh, and qualified witnesses, a testimony who, you know, have seen these at close range, but uh, the scientists and the scientific community in general, they want physical evidence, mm -hmm. which seems to be very hard to come by. Well, I'd rather know I'm not crazy, at least somebody else has seen what I have, so. Well, we sure appreciate the report. Well, good. Well, thank you very much. Okay. okay. Good luck.